Hi guys, so welcome to the first video in our series that is all about how to use Photoshop. Um, so this video is really going to be made for individuals that are brand new to Photoshop. Maybe you want to do some Adobe certification exams, or maybe you want to um, create some portfolio pieces, or maybe you just want to lose the, uh, learn how to use the software. This is going to be a really, really helpful video series for you. Now, pretty soon, we're going to be introducing a variety of different Photoshop projects that, where you'll be creating different pieces kind of inspired by other photographers and um, different editing styles and a really wide range of things. But before we jump into that, I really just want to kind of give you guys an introduction to the basics. So here we are um, with Photoshop started up. Um, what I highly recommend you do if you want to follow along is go up to, uh, let's make sure we're in Photoshop, you're going to go up to Window workspace make sure essentials is checked off and then click on recent uh, excuse me reset essentials once you've done that your workspace should look pretty similar to mine this might vary a little bit depending on which version of photoshop you're in but overall this will kind of bring us all to that same starting point um so over here we have our layers panel now this is going to be really really essential you will be using this a lot in photoshop now you can kind of think about this as sheets of paper stacked on top of one another so right now we only have one layer and it is currently locked and it is visible right so if i click on new down here this is going to create a new layer so this new layer is kind of like a second sheet of transparency paper stacked on top of the background which has our dog here um, so if i draw on that second layer right that second sheet of transparency paper uh, it leaves my mark there and i can remove it or i can hide it right or i can add to it and this is all on that second layer so it's separate from the first one if i move it behind the first layer um, I can't do that right now because it's locked. To unlock it, I'm just going to click on the lock icon. So if I drag it down, it's now below the dog layer. Okay. So again, just uh, think about it as stacks of paper on top of one another. So I'll go ahead and delete that. Um, if you can't view your layers panel for any reason, you're just going to go up to Window Layers. Okay. My dog says hello. Um, so this is not my dog. This was a picture that I took uh, back when I was volunteering with Positive Shelter Photography. They're a really great organization that basically goes to animal shelters and helps to take really nice pictures of the animals to help increase their chances of getting adoption, um, especially because a lot of people kind of look online when they're looking to adopt a dog. Um, but anyways, what I'm going to be doing with this picture is I'm going to be showing you guys just some simple edits that you can do to improve it. Um, so the first thing that I want to do is adjust the uh, color balance a little bit. So I only have one layer right now. I'm going to click and drag this layer to the new icon to create a copy of it. The reason I'm doing that is because if I make a mistake, I want that original one to fall back on. Okay, so I'm on that top layer here and to make some changes to it, I'm going to go up to image adjustments and then I have a whole bunch of different options um, so with these options I could adjust the color like I mentioned or I could do something like the brightness and contrast um, adjusting the contrast can always be very useful to just kind of uh, increase the darks versus the lights to make things stand out a little bit further I'm also going to brighten it up a little bit um, just so we can kind of better see the dog's eyes and some of his features um, now, what I just did was something called destructive editing. Destructive editing is bad. You don't actually want to do destructive editing. The reason it's bad is because if I were to save this picture, um, let's say I saved it as a Photoshop file with all my layers, I can't, well, I saved a backup, but if I didn't have this backup here, I can't go back and alter the contrast. Like maybe I wanted it a little less contrasted. I would have to go back and redo all those steps. So something better to do instead of doing the image adjustments is to work non-destructively. Non-destructively is always the best way to go when photo editing because it helps prevent uh, room for error. So instead of image adjustments, brightness contrast, I should go layer, new adjustment layer, brightness contrast. Now notice this is all the same options but there's a big difference. 
everything I do here is instead going to be placed onto a new layer. So here I'm making a new layer for brightness contrast. And if I just click on this little icon here, oh, there it is. If I click on this little icon here, it pulls up the brightness and contrast for me. Now it used to have a little pop-up, um, but this one pulled up right here in the properties panel. So here I can do the same exact thing. I can go and increase the brightness and increase the contrast. And then let's say I mess up, right? Let's say I go on here. I'm like, let's go super contrasted, super blown out. If I mess that up, it's non-destructive, right? I can just click back on that layer. Oh, I'm on the layer mask. I'll make sure I click on this little icon here. I can go ahead and bring down the brightness, bring down the contrast. So this is non-destructive. It allows me to make changes to this layer, this adjustment layer with the brightness and contrast. Um, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to clip it to the layer below it. So what that does is it just helps ensure that this layer is only affecting the layer below it. All right, so now that you guys know how to do adjustment layers, let's do one more. We're just gonna speed run it. Again, we're not going to go image adjustments. We're gonna go layer, new adjustment layer. Um, from there, this time we'll go ahead and do color. Now, before I click on that, please make sure um, you go through all of these different options and experiment with them, especially if you're new to Photoshop. Um, there's way too many here for me to cover in a video, but um, definitely experiment with them on your own time. Start to get a feel because these will be very, very helpful for you to use as you continue to grow as a photo editor. Um, but for now, we'll just go with color balance, click OK. And then from here, I can just use these sliders. I have it selected. I can use these sliders to kind of um, rebalance the colors. So my picture was kind of warm tinted, so I'm cooling it down a little bit, uh, dragging it more towards cyan and blues, kind of removing more of the reds and the oranges from the image, and that's looking better already. Again, I'm gonna right click and choose creating clipping mask. That way it's only applied to my top layer. So we've talked about uh, layers, we've talked about image adjustments. Um, I briefly mentioned clipping mask. Um, clipping mask might be a little fuzzy for some of you guys still, so let me kind of show you an example. I just went into my marquee tool here and I chose the elliptical. I'm holding shift and dragging to create a circle outline. Now I'm gonna create a new layer and I'm just gonna fill it with red, just for demonstration purposes. Now, clipping mask, like I said, they automatically apply to the layer below it. So if I clicked on this dog, right, this dog layer, and I right clicked and chose create clipping mask, it's now clipped into the circle. So it looks a little funky because there was my background layer below it. Um, but look, it's clipped into that circle. So now if I click on the dog, I can click and drag to kind of move them around, right? So that's pretty cute. Oof, oof, oof. Um, so that's kind of how clipping masks work. And then again, I can just right click, release clipping mask, and then it's no longer applied. So it's a really great way to kind of isolate parts of your image, or like spotlight it. Again, I'm just doing this with the circle, but there is so much more that you can do with that. Um, but that is our clipping mask. So something you guys have probably seen me using a lot um, for the demonstration was the paintbrush tool. For the paintbrush tool, you would just come right over here. If you click and hold on the various icons that have like this little arrow, that means there's other tools within it, right? So if I click and hold on the brush tool, again, you can view the pencil tool, color replacement tool, um, quite a few other varieties. Um, but we're just gonna talk about the brush tool today. So with the brush tool, we have the option to adjust all sorts of things. We can adjust the size of our brush. We could also do this by using shortcuts on our keyboard. Open bracket makes it larger. Close bracket makes it smaller. Um, you can also adjust the hardness of the brush. So that's basically gonna be the edge of the brush. So for example, if I create a new layer, this is a hard brush, and then we have a very soft, fuzzy brush, okay? Um, we have a whole ton of different brush options. So you click and drag this handle down here. You can view even more in this panel. You can also download and install others uh, by importing them. Um, there's a whole ton of stuff that you can do here. Um, I just wanna kinda give you guys a quick overview. Um, so one way I might use it for this dog photo 
is to add like a little catch light in his eye. Now he's already kind of got one here, um, but a catch light is a great way just to kind of bring focus to your uh, subject's eyes. Um, so if we do like a tiny little light like that, we keep it subtle, right? Again, it gives it just like a little something extra that kind of pulls your viewer's eyes to the dog's eyes. So it kind of brightens them up, makes them look a little more lively. Um, and this could work in people's eyes too. Um, maybe do like a little catch light on the nose. That's too much. <laughs> but you could do that. So now I did like that little light on the nose and that looked bad. Um, so to make it look better, we can use our brush and paint in that light. And then we could do something called a blending mode. All right, so with that layer selected, right up here where it says normal, these are various uh, blending modes. And these are super, super important to be familiar with, um, whether it's for testing purposes or even again, just for yourself to kind of better master photo editing. Um, they're super useful. So with this, I can kind of scroll through these different options. Like that one looks pretty good. Um, but what they're gonna do is they're essentially gonna blend that layer in with the layers below it in various ways. Um, so there's a ton of different options here. Um, yeah, it's gonna have different effects depending on the color, depending on the image below it, depending on a lot of things. Um, so yeah, maybe I use that instead to kind of emphasize the catch light. Okay, so now I'm just painting. I'll just call that catch light. Oh, to name your layers. I probably should have mentioned that before. You just double click. So we'll call this very first one we made backup. And then I'll just call this dog. Um, and we can just delete our second layer. So yeah, now we have that little highlight that we painted in with our brush. And then we have a blending mode applied to it. Again, this is gonna be one of those things that you are definitely encouraged to experiment with um, and play around with. You will use this a lot, a lot, a lot. Um, all right, so we talked about brushes very briefly. Again, please experiment with that. There's a ton more you could do. We quickly went over blending modes. Um, let's talk about our healing tools. So our healing tool is right above the brush. Again, if we click and hold, you'll see a ton of options. Now, our dog here, he's looking a little rough. Rough, get it? Um, all right, so, that was bad. I'm not gonna edit this. Um, so we're just gonna go to our dog, and what I'm gonna do is I made sure that his layer is selected. That's our first step. And he has these like weird orange things going on. He's also got some of these like weird patches. Um, so with my spot healing brush tool selected, it's gonna create a, it's gonna turn my cursor into a circle, kind of like we saw with the paintbrush. And just like with the paintbrush, we can alter the size. I'm gonna make it tiny, the size of this like orange speck here, and just click, and it's gonna remove those orange specks for me. So that is very helpful. I can do it with like, he's got some of these like little like spots on his face. Um, I don't want to do it too much, obviously, because it's for like dog adoption purposes and we want people to know what you see is what you get, but, um, you know, just like little things like the little eye goops, we can just start to clean them up. Cool. So that's some quick touch ups with our healing brush tool and there's other options. So patch tool is really good for large parts of our image. So for example, if I didn't want him to have a nose for whatever weird reason, I can just go ahead and select that whole area. Now Photoshop has some really cool new options. Um, we can revisit that later. Um, and then maybe I drag it over. Maybe I want to replace it with another eye. I'm gonna give him an eye nose. This is so weird. Um, but there we go. There we go. Um, so that's how you use the patch. So you just select a large area and click and drag over to remove it. Um, here, let's do a more realistic example. So we have like this leash here. Maybe we want to remove that. So I'm gonna make a selection around it, click and drag over to the white, and that's gonna to start to remove it for me. Um, so that way we can kind of clean it up a little nicer, align it up with my dog's ear. You know, we're getting there, we're getting there. Um, I can also sample. So if I press I, that's my shortcut for the eyedropper tool. So I'm just gonna sample from the background, switch to a brush, and I can kind of start to clean up this area. All right, 
So we just covered quite a bit. We went over our patch tool, our healing brush tool, um, and some weird ways that you could use it. Um, let's say we want to add some drama to this photo. Um, something else we can do is our dodge and burn tools. And these are two of my favorite tools in Photoshop. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new layer and I'm going to do a really funky shortcut. I'm pressing command, control, shift, E. And it's doing nothing. Command, control, shift, E. Sorry, it's command, option, shift, E. Now I am on a, a, a Mac. So this is where I was getting, uh, excuse me, this is where I was getting mixed up. Command, control, shift, E is the PC shortcut. On a Mac, it's command, option, shift, E. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna take all of these layers and flatten them onto a new layer. Okay, so control, E is the shortcut if I selected two layers. Um, and then press control, E, it's gonna merge them. So command option shift E or on a PC command control shift E is going to take all my layers and merge them onto a new layer. All right. So I just did that. Um, and then what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use the burn tool to create some shadows. Um, I wouldn't do this if I was actually using this for the dog's website, but if you're trying to do like a portrait of somebody, this can really enhance the portrait and make it a lot more, uh, a lot more interesting, a lot more dramatic, because it's basically, uh, um, excuse me, exaggerating the shadows. It's making them a lot more intense. It's enhancing the contrast. So maybe inside the dogs, I'm overdoing it, but you're getting the point for demonstration purposes. Um, adding more shadows here. And then maybe we go into, I'm clicking and holding, clicking the dodge tool. The dodge tool is gonna be the highlights. And then with that, I can paint in some highlights. I could have also used this to kind of enhance the catch light um, on our dog. All right, so again, I'm going over it. I want that light to be cast on his head. Maybe I want a little more of a highlight along the edge of his tie. And that's looking pretty good. Look at that difference. All right, he's almost looking like a movie poster now. All right, so that is um, our dodge and burn tools. It looks like this little lollipop for the dodge. Burn looks like this little like okay symbol. Um, so last thing I wanna talk about for this video, even though there is so much more, um, really just kind of going over introduction of some of the essential tools. The last thing I wanna talk about is our mask. Um, actually, I think we'll talk about mask in the next video when we talk about our next project because we'll be using mask very heavily there. Instead, let's quickly talk about cropping. Um, so this is our crop tool right here. And what we want to do is once we have this tool selected, you'll see these little handles appearing and we could just drag that either in or out. Um, so I want to kind of crop it. I'm going to use the rule of thirds here. So I'm kind of lining it up with this line here. Um, and I want to make sure delete cropped pixels is unchecked. Um, reason being, I might decide later that I want to expand this image. And if I delete those cropped pixels, again, that's destructive. And we want to keep it non-destructive. So I'm just going to be kind of hiding those cropped pixels. So I already actually want to change this adjustment. So again, I'm going to my crop tool, clicking and dragging there. It is loading. And I'm instead, still using the rule of thirds, I'm going to move them over to this side. I'm liking that better already. And then I'm gonna hit enter, and there we go. We have a different cropped composition. Maybe I go back in now and I'm like, actually, I want to bring it in a little more, keeping the focus here. That looks pretty good. And there we go, we have our final cropped image. So that's why you wanna ensure delete crop pixels is unchecked. So you can always go back through and change it later. And again, I'm just using the crop tool, which is this little icon here. Um, so that is it for our first quick introduction. I know that was a lot of information, um, but you could, if you guys have any questions at all, please feel free to drop them in the comments. Um, and thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.